Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, RPG Retro Reviews. I'm Captain Courageous, and I review old school modules and games and talk about how you might use them in your current campaign. This week I'm going to take a look at a new school release from Wizards of the Coast, Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage, part 2 of their two part module release taking a look at the City of Splendors and the Forgotten Realms. Dungeon of the Mad Mage goes under the legendary city to detail the vast dungeon under the city streets, under mountain. Now, back in 2016, I did a comprehensive review on under mountain itself and all products on the subject up to this point. So, if you are not aware of what under mountain is or who Halaster Black Cloak is, then I highly recommend you check it out. This review will focus on three areas of interest. The module itself and its contents, the map folio release of Undermountain's many maps, and a look at the module on the Fantasy Grounds virtual tabletop. So as usual, there's a lot to cover, let's get started. Brief spoiler warning, I will be revealing a few secrets, but nothing too detailed in that regard, but you're probably going to see a few level maps during this review and some details on the levels themselves. Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage was released on November 13th, 2018 and details all 23 known levels of the vast labyrinthine complex beneath Mount Waterdeep known as Under Mountain. The dungeon predates the city and is overseen by an ancient and crazy wizard named Halister Blackcloak. As I mentioned in my previous video, Under Mountain was first detailed in February 1991 and explored the first three levels of Halister's Dungeon and is one of the all-time classic releases for 2nd edition D&D and Dungeons and Dragons in general. For me personally, I've run several long-running Under Mountain campaigns over the decades and have a great fondness for it. When I heard that a new release for Under Mountain was in the works, I was ecstatic but that enthusiasm was tempered with reservation due to the expansive reach of the project. All 23 levels? Really? I mean, a vast number of products have been released for Undermountain over the years and less than half the dungeon has been detailed. The first two box sets had a poster sized map of the place and Undermountain is simply a massive undertaking. I was highly skeptical that the dungeon could be detailed in one product, though certainly I applaud the efforts to do so. So, how did Wizards of the Coast do? To be honest, it's a mixed bag. The book is pretty hefty, coming in at 320 pages long, broken into 25 chapters. The introduction, with a history of Undermountain, a full chapter for each level, and then finally a chapter for Skullport and three appendices. There's a lot of information here, so let's talk about the good first. Over the decades, many details about the other levels of Undermountain have been hinted at or given mention. Traditionally, Undermountain had 15 levels and 8 sub-levels. Many of these unpublished levels were legendary. The Sea Deeps, the Caverns of Ooze, the Terminus level, and the Lair of the Mad Wizard himself had all been mentioned but never officially detailed. Expedition 2 Undermountain even included a cross section of levels so the DM could visualize how everything fit together. In this update there are simply 23 levels with each level under or parallel to the next and for the most part how each level connects is pretty well detailed and explained and all of these previously unpublished levels are given a fairly detailed treatment though the level cross section from Expedition to Undermountain conflicts with what is presented here and sadly no new level cross section is given. Certainly with a complex of this size it would have been nice to have. It's also interesting to point out the Dungeon of the Mad Mage follows the old school style of dungeon design whereby the level of the dungeon coincides with the level of the characters that are meant to explore it. 
as you can see from this chart here, starting off at fifth level, by the time you get to level 10 of the dungeon, the characters are meant to be level 10 as well. And from that point, it matches pretty close. There are some interesting story hooks provided for every level, and the opportunity for a fascinating long-term dungeon campaign is definitely here. Shadow Dusk Hold, Skullport, and more. I've only had time to read the details of a few of the newer stuff, and I'm really impressed with it and look forward to introducing these new elements into my campaign. Now let's get into the other aspects of what's presented. As I said, I was skeptical of any attempt to detail all the levels of Undermountain in one product, and certainly what's presented here is the abridged version. While well done, the sheer vastness of the complex necessitates it. It really would be impossible to fully detail the place in one product, and even in the original boxed sets, vast swaths of the map were undetailed, leaving it to the DM to flush it out, which was part of the fun. Dungeon of the Mad Mage takes the same route with hallways that extend off the map to what's called expanded dungeon areas, leaving it up to the DM to detail what's there supposedly drawing their own unique maps and adding their own encounters. I won't begrudge Wizards this, as certainly it has its appeal. However, some parts of Undermountain are legend in the city above and with gamers over the last several decades, well spoken about in taverns around the city, especially the first level, which is the primary focus of Expedition to Undermountain in 3rd edition and the Halls of Undermountain in 4th edition. As you can see here, there's quite a bit missing, and for those of us who have long-running campaigns here, this can get a bit messy. Iconic rooms such as the Grim Statue, the Hall of Sleeping Kings, the Altar of the Spider God, and so forth are not here. For those starting new campaigns in Waterdeep, this might not seem that big a deal, but initially it kind of irked me. However, I do understand why it was done this way. This is 2018, not 1991. In decades past, we dungeon masters would craft our wicked traps and draw out our halls of doom, and they would see exploration by our limited group of players, and then fall into the Shroud of Legend. In 2018, however, the ability to share our creations and expand Undermountain as a community has never been greater, and it's the intention of Wizards of the Coast that DMs will expand these areas and then share them on the DMs Guild, which is a pretty awesome idea. Right now, if you explore the DMs Guild, the missing level 1 rooms are there. A contributor named Andrew James Woodyard has already detailed quite a bit of Undermountain's first level in a project of his own, and you can use it as a nice continuation of the map that connects to the new level 1 from the Mad Mage using the new system of expanded dungeon sections. He's done a great job of updating these iconic encounter areas, though I have to say I'm not that thrilled with the actual map he provided, but with a little work it can be improved. Andrews the Grim Statue and Labyrinthine Environments is available on the DM's Guild on sale now for only $3, and it's definitely worth checking out. Now, I provided a link for you in the doobly-doo. Now, the other thing that caught my eye was the way the maps look. Just like the maps from Waterdeep Dragon Heist that were drawn by the legendary Dyson Logos, the style of these maps looked familiar to me. A quick look at the cartographer credits reveals him to be none other than Tim Harton. For the uninitiated, Tim's name might not ring a bell, but if you've ever frequented an old school Facebook group, you might be familiar with his work. Tim has an excellent website, Paratime Design, and a vast database of old school dungeon maps is available there, and Tim has been quietly making maps for game companies for years. He generally releases a new map every week, and his work is simply voluminous and quite excellent. What I really like is that he tends to release several versions of his map designs, a DM's version and a player's version, which is minus secret doors and the like, and of high enough quality to be used on a virtual tabletop. Both JPEG 
and PDF form. You can preview high quality versions of the DMs map on the website and get the multi version maps on the DMs guild usually for about a dollar. Quite a few of these maps are meant for mega dungeons with expansion passages leading off the edge of the map so it can then connect to another map of the DMs choosing. Which is just what's been done here with Dungeon of the Mad Mage. So if you're looking to add to Halister's Halls, you can do so easily by simply visiting Jim's website. A link is in the description. Now some might think the maps provided are a bit plain and hardly up to the artful masterpieces of 5e e cartographers in the past like Mike Schley. However, I think what's provided is more than functional. As I've pointed out in the past, most of the time these colorful maps are frequently for the DM's eyes only and rarely actually seen by the players unless they're usually a virtual tabletop. From what I've seen, most people play with a rollout battle map and dry erase markers, so the highly detailed maps might look pretty, functionally they're not very useful. As an old school gamer, I actually like this simpler callback design and think it fits well with the theme of this mega dungeon adventure. One final little nit, I did a video in anticipation of this module's release called Halister Lives, which was my own take on how Halister survived his death during the spell plague, and I was curious as to exactly how Wizards of the Coast was going to address this. Well, they didn't even mention it, or address it directly. At best, their position appears to be that Halister was just in another plane of existence, and there's no mention of his death at all. The background section basically stops with Durnan building the Yawning Portal just like every other release dating back to the original Ruins of Undermountain box set. In the 4th edition adventure, Halls of Undermountain, they specifically say that the current proprietor is Durnan the Sixth, which is kind of stupid. And now that's basically been retconned and the current proprietor is the same Durnan he's always been, who has an unusually long life. The reason for this appears to be a knot in the weave that inhabits the depths of Undermountain. The knot apparently created by elves of the ancient elven kingdom of Ilfarn and the powerful magic they used when they moved their city of Alethalandar to Evermeet. This knot causes madness in those who inhabit Undermountain too long. Of course, Halister and his apprentices have been greatly affected by this, though Durnan and Mert the Moneylender have also been affected as well as evidenced by their long lifespans. Who else might fall sway to this effect is left up to the DM. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with what's presented here, and if you're a fan of Mega Dungeons or Undermountain, then certainly there is material for gaming sessions that could last for years. Now, if you combine that with Waterdeep Dragon Heist, which does not directly connect to Undermountain in this adventure, you have the outlines of the city and used with other products. And I would suggest that you highly get Volo's Guide to Waterdeep as well as some other Waterdeep supplements. And like I said, if you check out my Waterdeep video, you'll find that I've given you a whole list of products that you can get. You have a massive campaign because Undermountain is not meant for you just to explore it one level at a time. It's meant to be cohesive with the city above and the dungeon below. They are two parts of the same coin. They work together to provide a complete campaign. You have adventures on the city top and things going on with political intrigue and what's going on there with the guilds and the Lords of Waterdeep. Plus, you have the exploration of Waterdeep and Halister and, the, and his massive dungeon and you put that together to create a cool, cohesive campaign of the city above and the dungeon below and I'm telling you, I've been doing it for decades now, and I'm still not tired of it. It's just an endless lifetime event, and it's, I highly recommend that you approach it from that angle. If you're trying to just go from one level to the next in one massive dungeon ex exploration expedition, it's probably not going to last. But if you put it together with Waterdeep Above, then you're going to have a cohesive and awesome campaign that you and your players will enjoy for many, many years. And that brings me to the other product that was released along with Dungeon of the Mad Mage, which is the map pack. 
All 23 dungeon levels and skull port are detailed here on heavy cardstock sheets that have a thick plastic coating so you can draw on them directly with dry erase markers. If you're running from the book, certainly these would be handy to have as you won't have to continually flip back and forth from description to map, but they aren't really that big of a necessity. However, what is handy are the perforated sheets from the adventure's appendices. In the back of the adventure book, there were three appendices, the second and third being the Elder Runes deck and the Secrets deck. The idea being the DM could copy the pages and print them out to make decks that could be used to randomly determine which runes are discovered and what secrets of Undermountain the heroes learn about. The Elder Runes are randomly encountered on dungeon walls throughout Undermountain, each one having a Bane or Boon effect. For example, the Fire Runes Bane effect is 10d6 fire damage or half with a deck save. The Boon effect is 10d6 fire damage. The hero can add 2d6 at a time to the damage their attacks do. It's a cool idea and having them actually printed out in heavy cardstock already is an even better idea and I would certainly use them much like I used the cardstock traps cards in the original box set. The maps and the card sets are nice to have but it's not a big requirement and you could probably just skip it. And that brings me to the last thing I want to cover in this video, which is the Fantasy Grounds version. With a dungeon of this size and complexity, the organizational tools of Fantasy Grounds certainly alleviates much of the burden on the DM. Add to that the nice player maps provided, and if you're playing online or simply using an LCD display at your table, the benefits become obvious. Quite a few tables are available to help with the many encounters and effects that the heroes will discover as they explore Undermountain, and of course, the Runes and Secrets deck has been converted into a table form as well. Obviously, if you're using Fantasy Grounds, this is an absolute must-have. All in all, I'm really quite pleased with what's been done here. I'm quite giddy in places as I open up a chapter to see what new secrets of Undermountain there are to be discovered. Each dungeon level has its own unique theme and is definitely a character of its own and inhabited by interesting NPCs that you will have role-playing encounters with, which makes for a lot of fun. It's a mega dungeon done up in the old classic D&D style that befits its legacy. And while some players used to the graphical masterpiece of other products might find the maps overly simplistic, for an old school guy like myself, I think they are just right. Beginning with this review, I'm going to start rating the products I review on a scale from 1, a fumble, to a natural 20, a critical hit. So in regards to Dungeon of the Mad Mage, I will have to give this new release from Wizards of the Coast a 16. I'd also like to suggest that as a companion to this module, you go ahead and pick up a PDF of Halls of Undermountain at the DMs Guild, which is currently on sale for only $10. This is an excellent PDF with over 70 encounters that you can put in those expanded areas and full-size poster maps of three detailed encounters, the War Room, the Vampire's Laboratory, and the Marsh Portal, as well as a wonderfully detailed map of the Yawning Portal. And that brings this review to a close. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Please help me out, give me a like, subscribe, and check back for more detailed reviews like this one. And as always, my friends, may your D20 roll true and game on. <laughs>